morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Happy Wednesday for those that are here live. Happy whatever day week it is for those that are here. So someone recently, and they're like, happy whatever day week it is. I'm like, okay, I say that every day. It's okay. I like saying that. I like saying happy whatever day week it is for you. Because I hope you're having a great day. I just saw a great quote. I'll quote tomorrow about happiness. You have to wash yourself in happiness. Shlomo Karbach says such a tremendous point. We'll talk about happiness. It's not now. We've been talking about the doer and the commentator. That's the crew. If you've ever watched a sports game, or if you haven't but can imagine a sports game, there's the players, and then there are commentators. Let's leave the coaches out for a second. That's going to make it complicated. You got the guys in the field who are throwing a ball, and just to put it into the sport that I love most, football, and tackling and drawing up plays and reading lines and all the stuff that people don't know happen every second in football. And then you got guys in the booth that are commentating on the game. Those of you who don't know, but for those of you who know, like two, three years ago, I got a call from my good friend, Dave Markowitz. Um, one of the great organizations in the world, an organization called Olami, was doing a broadcast from the CM Hashas. So for those who don't know, let me just explain it all. Every day, there's a, a practice to complete one page of Talmud. Uh, it started, you know, almost a gener- almost 100 years, almost a century ago. And it's every, wherever you go, there's one page. Everyone's doing it at the same time. It's really cool. So this, the, you finish all of the Talmud in seven and a half years. And so at, at the finishing of that Talmud, they have, it's called the Siyam. Siyam is Hebrew from, for the completion. Shas is Hebrew for it's not Hebrew, it's an acronym for basically the Talmud. And um, and uh, last, two years ago, they, they finished in January, and they had, um, the, the event took place in MetLife Stadium. Right? Think about it. MetLife Stadium, 50,000 Jews, the greatest rabbis in America, sitting there, finishing it. It was really cool. So I got a call one day from my friend Dave Markowitz, who said, listen, we want to do a, a broadcast for those who aren't as familiar with Talmud so that they can also be part of it. So we don't have to show everything. So some of it, I said, amazing. He goes, would you like to be to do it? I'm like, would I like to do a broadcast out of MetLife Stadium? He's like, yeah. I'm like, we, he's like, we got the booth that like they use to broadcast games. I'm like, wait, you got like the booth of like Tony Romo sits in, like, you know, what I'm saying? Al Michaels, like you got that booth. You know, like where they go and they're watching the game, that booth. He's like, that booth. I'm like, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. Like, I, we need to prep for like two weeks. Like, I, I should I should sleep there for a couple of days just to make sure I'm, I'm comfortable. We walked in and we, we had it. It was awesome. Table, cameras everywhere. Behind me was the field. It's And the way it works over there in the booth is that it's glass. I guess because it gets super cold and for sound, but the glass is movable. So you can move it and now like you're, it's like a box. So we're watching this thing and broadcasting from that booth. Oh my gosh, it's a dream. So there are commentators and I I sat in that spot. You're, you know, a hundred yards from the, hundred feet from the, from the, from the field. And there are two guys usually sitting in a booth and commentating this guy went here that guy went there oh my gosh how did he miss that that was amazing how could he how could he have made that catch how could he have missed that tackle what was he thinking i can't believe he, he missed that play he's really gonna cost him his career oh my god i can't believe he made that play he's really gonna make his career right there are people sitting around watching screens they can do replay they can see what happened five minutes ago Right. And they got all this. And they're right at the game. And they're watching the players. And if you just like pull back and see these two different characters, you've got players who are in the game. If they're thinking like, wait, if I make this catch, it's gonna make my career as the ball's in the air, they're gonna they're gonna drop the ball. You know that as well as I know that. 
you don't got to be a sports fan to know that if you're thinking about anything but that ball, you're dropping that ball, especially with a guy who, who's the other side coming at you to tackle you. All they're thinking about is the game. When you're in the game. In fact, I remember when I was in high school and I played uh, varsity basketball. I remember being in the game. And I remember because I was a young kid, times like thinking like there's a big crowd. Oh my gosh, what if I miss? What if I score? Those are the worst games I've, I, that I've ever played. And I remember being on the court. And I remember moments where I was so in the game that everything was quiet. Like everyone around me, like as if like I was all that was there was the game. Every bit of my energy was on the ball, was on the game, on my move. It was the best games of my life. And the minute like the, the invisible wall broke and I heard the crowd and I was like, oh my gosh, this person's in the stands and I want to look good for this person and I want to not let this person down and I hope I keep on playing and I just missed the shot. Oh my God, I missed the shot. What happens if I'm off today? I, I Right, all that stuff. While I'm playing in the game, I remember the worst games of my life. I couldn't find the rim. I played basketball and played football. I went to a, a, a very Jewish school. We don't play football in very Jewish schools. Insurance, get at your head, can't be a doctor. It's complicated. We play basketball and we play hockey, but not real hockey. We play um, uh, floor hockey. I remember those moments player and then in the back there's a commentator you look at a game you got guys playing and all they're doing is thinking next play we had a guy on the shabbat show a couple of uh weeks ago he was super, the super bowl special for those who are watch the show if not you should go back and look at his great super bowl special we had a guy who was a who was a nba nfl player and i asked him i said you know if you watch the nfl sometimes you make a move for those uh, for those who who are fans this is going to sound elementary but for those who aren't i want to explain to you you can't go off sides in a game when you ever have the ball you have to like wait and then once the quarterback snaps it then you can move and if you go off sides the play stops depending on what side you're on whatever there are times in a game where the play happens there's a cr tremendous play that happens but as the play comes to an end there's a flag which means somebody violated a rule and it was the guy on the line. So the guy who just stands there has the block jumped. And as a result, this major play that everyone's so excited about now comes all the way back. It's tremendously embarrassing for the guy. I always feel terrible for that guy when that happens. And I asked the guy on the show, has that ever happened to you? He's like, of course. I'm like, you're in a game. There's 50,000 people there. There's millions watching. You move your foot one second too early. And then the entire play unfolds. The quarterback throws the ball to the wide receiver who makes a spectacular catch. They gain 40 yards. The place goes crazy. And then all of a sudden everything stops. And they single you out and say, because you moved your foot, all of that gets erased. And now you go backwards. How do you get over that? Imagine like going to work. And that happening, like, you know, like the deal's happening and they call you out. Yo, we got to now lose money. So he says, the greatest, he says, yeah, it's upsetting. But if you don't get your head into the next play, you can't get to the next play. It's like, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll deal with it. But I can't deal with it now. Like, yeah, embarrassing yourself in front of 50,000 people isn't necessarily like the best thing you do every day. But like, yeah, that was a second ago. I got to like, remember, we're going to snap the ball again. That means if I don't have my head straight, I'm not going to be doing my job. So I got to just do my job. I don't have the time. If you can use our language, because I'm doing this for a reason. I don't have the time to comment. Now, if you are looking at the game and you're watching it with me and you see the guy on the field that makes the mistake, and then you he, see the guys in the booth talking. It's amazing. The guy in the field, as he gets up, he's like, thinking, okay, next play. He's out. He's, 
the commentator, they're talking about it for the next 20 minutes. I can't believe they lost 40 yards. Can you believe who's that, you know, so-and-so he's came out of, you know, Washington state. They really should have taught him better how to play and the 40 yards when they needed the momentum. And now the, the, the team is back and they were about to score that they, 15 minutes later, the team is down. Had he not stepped over the line, like they're, they're not, th- they haven't stopped. And then they go to the replay. And they go to the, the, the film they have. And look at the replay here. Hold on a second, everybody. Let's go back. Do you remember eight minutes ago when they got a 40-yard play and he stepped over the line? And because of that, right, these guys, they, they never it never ends. And the game is over. And they go, well, that was a great game, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. Man, the Giants lost, but they could have won. A couple of big plays cost it. The drop ball in the first quarter, the, 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 uh, the, the fumble in the second quarter. And do you remember in the third quarter when the guy stepped over the line and an offsides calls brought back a 40-yard play? The guys, and then the same crew or different crew that night on the news. Well, that's back when we grew up, right, on the news. Now, it's ESPN every 15 seconds, and the Giants lost today, and look at this play, and it's never ending. Now, the dude who actually stepped over the line, for the most part, he's it, it, it lasted six seconds because he, he had so much to do, which is defend the quarterback. He can't keep on thinking about it. And, he, and if, if he's actually in the right team, he probably went home, went to bed, and woke up the next morning did it again. And I bet you his teammates are like, it happens. Like the only guys that don't get upset. If you ever watch a game, you'll know the only, and if you don't, if you, if you haven't watched sports, just stick with me. It, it, it just, you, you can imagine it. Like if you ever watch a game, the only people, if you notice, the only people that are not upset when somebody messes up is the teammates. Did you ever notice that? Everyone else is losing it. The guy 75 pounds heavier than he should be, 17 rows up who's on his seventh beer is screaming his head off at his own team. But the guy in the field whose entire career is based on the winning of this game. He's fine. The coach, they're not yelling. You know why? Because they know how much pressure it is. So this guy who steps over the line and messes up, if he's in the right program, the guy's like, just move on. It happens. His team, move on, it happens. His coaches, move on, it's happened. He goes home, sees his wife. She's like, it happens. But he's cool. He's not talking about it anymore. You know who else is talking about it? Everyone who's commentating. Every, every commentator. The booth, the sportscasters, the guys on the train, the news reporters. If you look at something as a player and as a commentator, I'm going here for a reason. Two ways of looking at something. The doer. The doer says, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I'm doing. I got something in front of me right now. I don't have the brain power to worry about a mistake that I made seven minutes ago. I don't. As one coach once said, the greatest thing he wants for his wide receivers is a very bad short-term memory. That's what he hopes for his players. You miss, you miss, you miss, you miss, you miss. Forget it. Forget it. Next one you'll catch. The player is the doer. And what he's got to do all day is worry about doing. And when he is in the middle of a game at a professional level, he understands that the The work to get it done is so hard. We look at it as a game because it is, which means it doesn't have real consequence. It doesn't mean it's not hard when you go through it, right? Games are games because they don't have consequence. People thank God don't die at the end of it. It's not the gladiators in Rome, but it doesn't mean it's not hard while they're going through it. And when you're a professional athlete and you've got to catch something coming at you, you know, what feels like a million miles a minute while extending your body, while getting hit, it's hard. And it's so hard that it's harder than what you can do, especially because you have someone opposing you. And so you don't have any brain space for, I can't believe I messed up. There's no brain space for, I hope we, we do it. I, I, I don't know what to do. I hope that I, I, I redeem myself. 
when you're on the field, the only thing you have in your head is I got to get it done. I'll think later. When you're not on the field, all you do is talk. What else do you do? You just talk. You can't play, so you might as well talk. I don't like this adage, by the way. There's a big adage that says, if you can't do teach, I don't like that. That's, that, that just came into my head. I just want to note that for the record. It's not true. It's not true. There are some great teachers that can do. They're just giving their lives to teaching. Just not for now. But if you can't act, you talk. That's true. There are people that can't act. They can't do. So they talk. Now, we're not, we're not going to talk about that for a second. All the people out there that are murmuring in the background, you know those types? They are commenting on everything. They know better than anybody. They know what the rabbi should say and shouldn't say. They know how the government should be run or shouldn't be You know that crew? I love that crew. We're all that crew. There's all, everyone has a piece of us that's like, if they were just, it's because you can't do, you can't do so you talk. Well, here's how it works. There's moments where you, the commentators are dominant in your mind. There's a moment where you got to go to your commentators and they got to talk and they got to analyze with you. And your brain has a booth. In your brain, there's a booth. A nice booth with screens that have instant replay that can come up with stuff that you've done or haven't done for years. They have access to tape since you were born. It's a booth. Two people. It could be two men. It could be two women. It could be a man. No, no, no. You got a booth. You can have your mom in here. You can have your dad in here. You can have your teachers in here. You can have your boss in here. You can have, I don't know, you can have whoever you want in that booth. That booth's got people. You got people in that booth. Your wife, your husband, your kids. I don't know. The booth. And the booth is commenting on your life every minute. You're having a play-by-play. I can't believe she said that. How could she say that? You're not going to do this. It's not going to work. Just give up. Stop it. You can do this. How come you can't do this? You think they're taking advantage of you? You think he's taking advantage of me? I don't know. Why did he cut me off? The booth. The booth. You said that? Oh, my gosh. Don't say that. I can't believe that happened. The booth. And they got microphones and they're broadcasting. And hold on a second. I know you're about to do this. Let's go to the videotape. Four years ago, you went to see that person. And you know what they said to you? Let's go to, hold on, slow down. Let's go to the videotape. You see that? Look at that. Anyone have that but me? Am I the one with the booth? I got a booth. I'm sure you got a booth. They got instant replay. Right? Are you with me? Like, we got booths. The problem is each booth is different. And sometimes you have people at the booth going like, you could do this. And sometimes people are going, you can't do this, but it's a booth. And here's the problem is that you want to get in that booth. Here's the secret. It's hard to get in that booth. Neuroplasticity, whatever. We've been talking about that for a long time, how to change the booth, how to change the script. It's hard. But here's the secret. Oh, by the way, before I tell you the secret, you know what that booth says a lot? You know what's always coming out of that booth? I don't think you're enough. That's where it comes from. It comes from the booth. Yeah, they're about to do that thing. I don't think they can do it. You can almost see them being like, Tony, what do you think? I don't think so, Michael. What do you think? I don't think they could do this. No, you can't. Hold on. Let's go to the instant replay. You see how you felt? Now, this is a bad idea. The booth. Here's the thing. If you don't know you have a booth, you're going to spend half your life listening to the booth. You got to know when to turn the booth off and be a player. Players don't think. They don't comment. They don't have time. Players just do. They're soldiers. I don't want to think about it. 
I don't want to ask questions. I don't want to ask questions. I don't care. Boom. Forward. You can be thinking about how do I get around, but not why, yes, no, should I, not enough, yeah, I'm enough. Players move. They play. Squirrel brain. They don't think. Commentators think. We got to know what we're in. Well, at least got to identify it because most people live their lives half in the game and half in the booth. What I want for us is to either be in the booth or be on the field, but not both. Not both. You want to be in the booth? God bless you. Go to the booth. But when you're in the booth, you're in the booth. Let it all go. But when you get on that field, when you're playing in your life, you get to be in that game. You're not thinking, I should have, I shouldn't have, I should No, 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 no. Because if you're playing in the game and you got one ear in the booth, you're not playing in the game. You're not, that's why you keep on getting tackled. All right, we'll talk about this a little more. And I also want to tell you what happened with the boards. Standing in the middle. <laughs> we'll continue with God's help. All right, everybody. Have an amazing day. And with God's help, hope to see you again tomorrow. Today, do me a favor. Just see if you can find the booth in the field. See if throughout the day, just identify it. Where am I in the booth? And when am I in the field? We'll talk about it. All right, have a great day. Be to you soon.